in a place like Flint, Michigan and have lead in your drinking water or just want to prepare for the next hurricane or maybe you want to prepare for the zombie apocalypse and keep watching. Hi guys, you want some lemonade made from the freshest alpine water? Come on in. No fluoride, no chlorine. Today we're making fresh clean water out of nothing but thin air. Straight up to your fridge for ice and drinking water. In 1945, Grand Rapids became the first city in the world to add fluoride to its drinking water to prevent tooth decay. And now almost every city in the US has fluoride in the water. But fluoride remains a hot topic of debate whether it's actually good for you or is it maybe even bad for you. And you know what the best way is to get fluoride free water? Don't add it in the first place. So we're gonna extract water from the air and turn it into clean, revitalized and healthy drinking water. That is the plan at least. You can buy an atmospheric water generator for the insane amount of three to four thousand dollars. I think the target market for them is people that have a bunker deep down in the ground preparing for the apocalypse. But we're gonna make one for a few hundred bucks. What we need is a dehumidifier, a pump to get it directly to the fridge, a good filter and 14 magnets of course. I have this dehumidifier from when my crawl space got flooded, so I will clean it up and put it to good use. Reverse osmosis can only remove about 85 to 90 percent of the fluoride from the water. But as far as I know, there is no fluoride in the air. Which means, water out of the air is fluoride free. Look, I'm not saying that fluoride is bad for you, but when I was in elementary school, every morning they would hand around this bowl of fluoride pills. And it tasted almost like candy. It's good for your teeth, they said. So this day, it was me and this girl's turn to stay over and clean the blackboard and tighten up the classroom. And we ate like half of the giant bowl of fluoride pills. Her teeth were rotten by the time she was in her 20s. My teeth are fine, but I'm pretty sure I lost some brain cells. So what more scientific proof could you want that fluoride is not good for nothing? So the way this works, the dehumidifier removes excess moisture from the air. The water from it has to be purified though before you can drink it. Therefore I run it through a 5 stage filter and have a UV light installed. In addition I will run it through a revitalization filter, more on that in a bit. And finally it will run through the filter in the fridge. As you can see here, the noisiest tool does not necessarily mean it's the best choice. This is the cutout for the water dispenser pump. It seems like the best option was to melt the plastic. The biggest challenge I have is trying to figure out how to turn off the unit once the water container is full. First I try to tie an external switch into the existing circuit or move the existing switch. But it was so fragile and stalled, I didn't want to mess with it and possibly break it. So then I tried piping the two containers together so that the existing switch would turn off once it's full. For that I had to drill a hole, put in a fitting and then connect the two containers with some flexible water pipe. I added a list of all the components used here in the description. Here I'm trying to find the best layout for all components to fit to build a nice enclosure at the end. Here goes the first test run. The water runs through the filter. Everything looks good. But when I checked it at 4 a.m. in the morning, because I got woken up by the garbage truck, yes, they come that freaking early. The water has overflown and was all over the table and the floor. Because the two containers are not on the same level, the water didn't reach the switch while the other container was already overflowing. Honestly, I thought this would be easier. So then I tried to make the flotation part of the switch longer so that it would turn off earlier. 
And that did actually work. I just didn't really like the solution because I didn't like to have both containers connected because it wasn't really maintenance friendly. So I ended up installing an external water level switch that will control a relay to turn it off. Now that's really all you need to have contaminated free water during the next hurricane. To get the delicious fresh revitalized mountain water taste, let's take it up a notch. This water quality is already way better than anything you get from a water tower. Some people believe that high pressure pipes in electromagnetic fields cause water to lose its natural healthy structure. They call it dead water. There is definitely some truth to that. I remember as a child we would go up into this cabin in the mountains and the only water there came straight from a stream coming down the mountain. I swear that was the best water I ever tasted, I loved it. Now I did not know that this was a possibility back then. I guess that's how the deer pee is made. But then a few years later they built a road and that stream was put underground and running through pipes and it never tasted the same again. Filtering, reverse osmosis or any number of other common treatments will not establish the healthy structure of water. An Austrian fellow under the name of Johann Grander believed that water can be revitalized by restoring its structural integrity which brings water back to life and to its original vitality and energy. Now I bought a Grander filter used off of eBay years ago because they are pretty expensive new. But to be honest, the time I used it I didn't really feel much of a difference. But to be fair, I'm not really sure if it's an original Grander filter or if it's a copy. I found this video on YouTube on how to make one yourself. And although I don't believe that a Grander filter uses magnets, I thought this is interesting and I'm going to try this. Especially because I remember when I was little my grandfather made these magnets for friends and family. And I still have one. This is at least 30 to 40 years old now. My mom would place a pitcher of water on it and we would drink that water. It was also supposed to help with pain. In my family you only got pain medicine if you lost a limb or something. And even then, I remember I was trying to pole jump but the pole I used had a nail in it and it almost ripped my middle finger off. It was just dangling. After it was reattached at the hospital and the numbing from the anesthesia wore off, I asked my mom to give me some pain medicine. And she would cut a Tylenol in half and give me that magnet to put my hand on it and say, A little pain has never hurt anybody. Maybe you think twice next time before doing something stupid. But I'm not sure if that magnet really helped with the pain and of course there is always the placebo effect involved. What I do know though is I still only think once before I do something stupid. When I was looking for magnets online I came across this review. Brings blood to your fingers. And I just thought, idiot. Well, I cut myself four times before I finally decided to use gloves. That's how smart I am. <laughs> I read the manual afterwards and of course it said right in there to use gloves. I guess that's karma for thinking what an idiot. Look how strong that is, I'm just trying to put it down. The idea is to put the magnets together with the same polarity. Now that is not easy with such strong magnets I learned. The thought was to just put it into this pipe and press them together. But how to get it into the pipe, that was the difficult part. I had to insert this tube in the middle, otherwise the magnets would just rotate around in the tube and slam together. These magnets are super brittle, they slam together too hard and they break right in half or a chunk comes off. That's probably why it also says to wear safety glasses, which I didn't do that either. But no matter what, I could not compress it enough to close the lid. I tried just about anything before I came up with this idea. This is how I finally got him in there and was able to close the lid. At least from what was left. I had 14 magnets to start with and I ended up with 7. Now I just have to remove the pin and pull out the wood. And now the fresh water tube is gonna run right through there. Now that I know how to handle the magnets without breaking them, I probably buy some more and modify it. If I see a difference in water quality that is. I'm not drinking water with sand in it. Literally the only perk of living in the United States is that our water has no sand. 
Real mountain water runs over lots of rocks and you end up with minerals and alkalized water. I guess this is the best alternative to add minerals and alkalize the water. Now I just need to build an enclosure to put everything together. First I'm building these wooden frames. And then I glue and nail it together. This is a task for the bigger nail gun. I find it easiest to clean the wood glue right off before it gets too dry. Of course the dehumidifier needs a lot of air circulation. And that's why I went with this slotted design. Adding an access door to replace the filter and whatever other maintenance is required. I'm wiring everything up into one electrical box so that I only have one cable to plug in. I don't want to use any toxic wood treatment that may end up in the water, that's why I'm using this beeswax. Now if you really want to prepare for a hurricane, you also need a backup power to run the water unit in case you need to Watch this video next to see how to build one.